Can you call your other classmates? Good afternoon. So we can start. It's pretty late. Okay, doctor.
looking for a good number so we could start. Okay, so for this afternoon, we learned outbreak. Actually, you are seeing an outbreak pandemic right before your eyes in the form of your coronavirus. And um, with that knowledge, um, you will appreciate um, what we need to learn regarding outbreak more because we are living in this situation. So in the previous lecture, you've seen definition of outbreak, uh, which I asked in the quiz. Don't worry, I will revise the answer. Um, I kind of mislabeled the correct answer. So the correct answer is indeed outbreak and not cluster. So don't worry about that. Anyways, so this is uh, an application on how uh, assess outbreak uh, with a little exercise that we will do in class. Um, the lecture that uh, I have asked you to read uh, would come in handy in applying some concepts to this exercise. Okay? So this case study was adapted from study files for outbreak investigation from CDC. So some elements were omitted so that we could focus on the elements of outbreak investigation. So this is a real-life outbreak investigation undertaken in Texas 1998. So some aspects have been altered a bit to assist in meeting the desired teaching objective and allow completion of this case study. Okay. That's why I didn't want to start because I'm still, I will have to stop once in a while to admit your classmates who are late. Okay. Okay. So what happened to us? So the department received a telephone call If you are having bad connection and you have to admit and readmit all over again you could also um, watch this lecture at the YouTube channel if you're having trouble connecting with Zoom, okay? So it was reported that he and his roommate were suffering from nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. They became ill that night. Uh, the roommate took over the counter meds with some relief of symptoms. So neither saw a physician or went to the emergency room. Okay. So the students believe where the illness was due to food, due to pizza, and they asked if they should attend classes and take a midterm exam that was scheduled that afternoon. What questions or types of questions would you ask the student if you were the one investigating the case? What more questions would you like to ask? Anyone? What type of uh, food they get, uh, doctor? Or what state was would the pizza be? Okay, that's correct. What else? What other questions will you ask? 
Doctor, from where they travel? Travel history. Okay. Where else did they go? Where else? Doctor, what are the hygienic conditions? Hygienic conditions they were under. Yes, so sir. in, so in real in relation to, for example, an outbreak such as coronavirus. So this is more or less contact tracing as well. Where did the students go? What did she do, etc., etc. So these are the type of the questions that one would usually ask. So what? What is the person' problem? So you describe the illness more. Uh, as mentioned, whether the physician was consulted, ER, would any tests be performed or any treatments that they provided? Who else became ill? Uh, the characteristics of the people who become ill, so the two roommates, did they have any other morbidities that we dispose them to sickness, etc., etc. When did they start to have illness symptoms at the same time? Who, who, is, contact, who is contact zero, patient zero, for example? So where are they located? So both of them are ill. Um, for example, living in one house or one room, etc. And why did they think they became ill? Okay, so these are the important questions that you would ask the student. So the staff was doubtful the students report, but they felt they need to explore. So they made calls to establish the facts and if other persons were affected. So the pizzeria where they had eaten closed until 11 a.m., no answer from the student health center. So a message was left on the answering machine. So then a call to the emergency room at the local hospital revealed that 23 other students had been seen for AGE for the last 24 hours. In contrast, only three patients had been seen at the ER for similar symptoms from March 5 to 9, none of whom were associated for, with the university. So all of a sudden, what happened? So there was an increase of number of students in one hospital coming from one university for the last 24 hours. For the previous week, there was just three who had AGE and none came from the university. So at an eyeball or at an initial glance, you would already think of a possible outbreak. Okay. So do you think that this complaint warrants to be investigated further? Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. Why? Ma'am, because it could be a possible outbreak. So we should curb it as soon as possible so that it shouldn't spread to more population. So it will harm other people. Then we should curb it as early as possible. That's why it should be given more for the investigation. Okay. So... Um, using the past lecture that I have asked you to do, what is the definition of outbreak? It was in the quiz. What is the definition of an outbreak? Ma'am, it's like the occurrence of illness uh, or like some specific health-related causes in a particular time period which uh, like crosses the limits, like it's an excess occur, like in comparison to the normal expectancy rate. So, Okay. Um, there are uh, also in the lecture, it was defined that, uh, not, that not all increase in cases can be considered an outbreak. Can, can some of you enumerate some instances wherein it is not considered an outbreak? 
not all increase of cases can be considered outbreak. When is that? Ma'am, when there is. Okay, go ahead. Ma'am, when there is increased local interest or public awareness. Okay, when there is increased awareness, of course, reporting would increase. So it would just increase detection. Same way if there are new screening criteria, etc. Same way, even if it's just one case. But if it's a, an increase, for example, for a disease that is supposedly eradicated, such as polio, just one case, you do not need to have thousands of polio cases for you to consider that a disease is an outbreak. Clear on that? Okay, so let's proceed. So at 10.30, so the physician returned the call and reported that 20 students with vomiting and diarrhea had been seen the previous day that was believed that only two students were affected. So usually he would only see one or two, typically on a day and in a week. So the health center has not collected two specimens from any of the ill students. So if you are part of the city surveillance unit asked to investigate the situation, what will be your initial response? Do you think these cases of gastroenteritis represent an outbreak at the university? Why or why not? Using the concepts you have, that you have learned in the previous lecture. Anyone? What do you think? What would you, what would be your initial response? Anyone? Do I have to call? You think that it's an outbreak? Okay, question number four was answered. Question number three. What, sh what will be the initial response of the surveillance unit? Ma'am? Ma'am? Yes. Ma'am, like, uh, I think that if we can, if we are considering in our mind that it's an outbreak, so like uh, those students who are infected, already infected, like they should be first like kept aside, like they should be not uh, let be mingled with other people so that they could spread that virus or something like that. I think so. Initial outbreak, as mentioned in the lecture, what's important is Detection and containment. Limit the number of affected individuals. In this case, if they think that it's related to food, initial response may be closing the bacteria that they suspect would have been the cause of the acute gastroenteritis and the like. Okay? Okay, as part of your preparation for researching for the disease, so that must be considered 
in the differential diagnosis of an outbreak of acute gastrointestinal illness. So, broad categories of diseases that you must consider aside from acute gastroenteritis for nausea and vomiting. What else could you think of? So if it's infection, you could look at the causes. So it could be bacterial, it could be viral, it could be parasites. There could be toxins and others. It could be psychogenic. Why psychogenic? Why do you think you could consider psychogenic? In Remember that these students have exam the following day and are they thinking to be absent. So that could also be a differential that you should consider. Of course, listed would be bacteria, the viruses and parasites and all toxins that could cause your acute gastroenteritis. What's your next step then? Close the pizzeria, do your um, stool exams, etc., etc., and this is where we go. So what happened was the staff visited the ER at the hospital and reviewed the records of the patients that were vomiting. Okay. So based on these records, the 22 students, 91% had vomiting, 85% had diarrhea, 68 had cramping, 66 headache, 49 muscle ache, 5% had blood diarrhea. So oral temperatures range from the following. CBC was performed and 10 students showed increased WBC, PMNs, lymphocytes, and bands. And stool had been submitted but no result yet for bacterial pathogen. So knowing this microbiologic investigation, what will you think? Such that later, okay, culture results become available. So the specimens did not identify the following. But some specimens were positive for fecal leukocyte and fecal occult blood. So how might you interpret the bacterial culture results and what questions do these results raise? So they did not identify Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter, Vibrio, Listeria, Yersinia, E. coli, Sirius, or Staph. So how would you interpret the result? Like severity and significance of the uh, infection. What? Severity and significance of the in infection. What about?
Why are the results negative? So go back to your microbiome. What are the reasons why your cultures are could be negative? What are the possible explanations? What are the possible reasons why you have a negative culture? Remember, the, re the stool wasn't collected right away. Uh. Okay, are you answering? <clears throat> your specimen may be mishandled. Your your exam may be done late. Also, what? It could be that the bacteria that caused the AGE was not among the bacteria that was tested. It is some other bacteria. You know that the test may be specific for, for a certain type of bacteria. Okay? So, by March 12, 75 persons with vomiting or diarrhea had been reported and all who live, all students live in the campus. So no cases were identified among faculty or staff or from the local community except for one case, date of illness onset were March 9 to 12. So the median age of patient was 19 years, 69% were freshmen and 62% were female. Okay. So this is the onset of gastro gastroenteritis among students. Okay. So how are you going to describe this epidemic curve? So how do you call what kind of epidemic curve would have a steep slope and a gradual decline? Gradual downslope, steep upslope, and gradual decline. So this is what you call a point source epidemic curve. This is usually seen in infectious um, cases, okay? So it means there's sudden exposure and then knowing that there is exposure, you suddenly withdraw exposure, then causing the gradual downslope. So what happened then? So this is the information gathered. The university population is 27,000. For spring, approximately 12,000 students. 2,000 live on campus. 
and there are 36 residence halls. So about 75% of the students are Texans. The university uses municipal water and sewage services. No breaks or work on the water or sewage lines. No road work or digging around the campus. So campus dining service to cafeteria. Same company with half a dozen fast food establishments. Okay. 2,000 students belong to a meal plan which is limited to persons living on campus. So most of them dine at the main cafeteria which serves hot entrees as well as items from the grill. Sorry. Deli bar and salad bar. A second smaller cafeteria on campus offers many selections with the per item cost and is also accessible to meal plan members. In contrast to the main cafeteria, the smaller cafeteria tends to be used by students who live off campus and university staff. The smaller cafeteria also offers hot grid foods and salad bar, but has no deli bar. Okay. Spring break. Is to begin March 13, at which all dining services will cease until 23. Although many students will leave town during the break, it is anticipated that about a quarter of those living on campus will remain. Okay. Hypothesis taken with seven of the earliest cases reported by the ER and the Student Health Center, all cases had illness on March 10. Four were male, three were female, all but one was a freshman. Two students were psych majors, one each was majoring in English and animal husbandry. Three students were undecided about their major. They came from five different residential halls, all reported eating most of their meals at the university's main cafeteria. So during the past week, all but one student had eaten food from the deli bar, two had eaten food from the salad bar, and three from the grill. Seven-day food histories revealed no particular food item that was common to all or most of the students. So what do you think so far? Let's continue. Except for the psych majors, none of the other students shared any class. So only one had a roommate with a similar illness. These five students belonged to a sorority or a fraternity. Three students attended an all-school mixer on March 6, the Friday before the outbreak began. Two students went to an all-night science fiction film festival and one of the dorms on March 7. Students reported attendance at no other special events. Most had been studying for their midterms for most of the weekend. The use of information available. State your leading hypothesis on the pathogen, mode of transmission, source of the outbreak, and period of interest, and what actions would you take? First, we must contain the outbreak, doctor, and next, uh, we will uh, we must find the source of the outbreak, and uh, we must find that uh, incubation period of the uh, infection, doctor. If you will think of a pathogen, mention bacteria. Is it likely your cultures are negative? So it will leave you with viral, parasitic, toxin, psychogenic. Between viral and parasitic, what do you think is more plausible?
with the description of the symptoms onset epidemic curve. Which is faster, viral or parasitic? Viral. Viral. So yes. the behavior points to a viral cause of your AGE. Mode of transmission, how do you think did they get the virus? Through food? Through food. From? Food from the university cafeteria. If it's water, there should be more cases even in the community if it's from the water source. Okay? Okay, so based on findings, descriptive epidemiology of early cases and hypothesis generating interviews hypothesized that the source was a viral pathogen spread by a food or beverage served at the main cafeteria at the university between March 5 and 10. So as a result, they inspected the main cafeteria and interviewed staff on the March 12. So 31 staff members were employed. 24 were food handlers, except for one employee who worked at the deli bar and declined to be interviewed. All, de all dining service personnel were interviewed. So what key areas should be explored during the interviews with the cafeteria food handles? What do you think? What do you want to know? They are interviewing now the food handlers. What do you want to ask? Uh, we can ask them about the food uh, they are serving the people. Like How uh, did they serve the food, did they follow sanitation protocols and the like? If they had hepatitis, etc., a vaccination, wash their hands, etc. So most of the things are outlined here. So identify the food items served, the ingredients, etc. Determine staff or family members were ill. Hand washing technique. Collect the stool specimen from the handlers. Watch or reconstruct the procedures done in the kitchen. Work schedule and recipes. Okay. So they were questioned about the responsibilities. which milk they serve, where they work, etc. So in the cafeteria, the deli bar had its own preparation area and refrigerator. So during mealtime, sandwiches were made to order by a food handler. So each day, newly prepared deli meat, cheeses, and condiments were added to depleted deli bar items from the day before without discarding leftover food items. So while the deli was open for service, sandwich ingredients were not kept refrigerated or on ice. So the deli bar containers were not routinely cleaned. Samples of leftover food, water, and ice were collected. Okay. None of the food handlers interviewed reported being ill in the last two weeks. Stool cultures were requested. So before dinner, March 12, the department closed the deli bar. So do you agree with the decision to close the deli bar? So what action would you take now? Ma'am? Yes. 
Ma'am, like uh, they closed the Delhi bar on the basis that uh, they didn't clean or they, the sanitization was not proper and they served the leftover food which was not refrigerated also properly. So the closing was fine for a certain period, but the actions now they should take is they should first sanitize the uh, like the region where the, the food was kept and the proper refrigeration should be done. Then only they should start again service. Like they should be a uh, like. They should interrupt in between for some days, then again they can start after it's cleanly cleaned or something. So they pointed at the Delhi bar as the source. So what happened was there's a case control study among students. So ill students who could be reached at their dorm were enrolled as cases. So dorm roommates who had not become ill were asked to serve as match control subjects. So investigators inquired about meals the students might have eaten during March 5 to 10 and where the foods were eaten. All inputs collected over the telephone. So advantages and disadvantages of undertaking a case control instead of a cohort study at this point in the investigation. What's a case control? And what's, what is a cohort study? Anyone remember our previous lectures? Ma'am, cohort is like uh, comparing between the groups who had infected and the groups who are not infected. And the case control is like... Hmm. Uh, I don't know, ma'am, this for right on the cohort case control what's a case control study You have two groups and then you compare the outcome. So how would you define a case for this study? So you could do like so. A case was defined as vomiting or diarrhea. So LB, loose bowel movement with 24 hours with onset in a student from the university seen at the emergency room. So what elements of the case control study might affect the validity of the measured association? So remember your selection bias, overmatching, and possibility of, the, of a risk factor. So here is what they found. So eating at the main cafeteria was not associated with illness. However, eating from the deli bar was significantly associated with illness. Because such a small number of controls ate at the deli bar, individual food items from the deli bar could not be examined. So by March 13, 125 persons with vomiting had been reported. So the investigation asked for fresh tool specimens from ill students for viral studies. Okay, so who should be enrolled as subjects for this study? Do you think you could get the one twenty five, or you could get all the students who ate at the Delhi bar, etc. So at the main cafeteria, I mean. So what happened was a case was defined as vomiting. So 40 cases were randomly selected from the 125. So they chose only 40. 
160 controls were randomly selected from the university meal plan database. So investigators considered collecting information for the case control study through face-to-face -face interviews. So advantage and advantages of each method of data collection. So which, which method would you recommend giving the circumstances around the outbreak? Telephone interview, self-administered, face-to-face. So for example, during the pandemic, you could not do face-to-face -face anymore. So it would depend, each would remember your data collection, each would have advantages and disadvantages, and it's up to you to decide whether, what mode to use. Okay. So they administered it by telephone, and students were selected. So if the student was not present, additional phone calls were made to contact the students. Students not reached during spring break were distributed on the return. Okay. 36 cases in 144 controls were contacted. So cases included in the study were similar to all cases, etc. So results were tabulated as follows. While well, only persons who ate at the main cafeteria for the specified period were included in the meal analysis. So here is what they found out. So who what is the culprit? So they isolated it Delhi Bar March nine to ten. So which is the culprit? Other investigations, water and ice samples obtained from the cafeteria were all negative. Food cultures and rectal swabs for the food handlers were negative. The one who refused to be interviewed worked primarily at the deli bar. When she finally agreed, she reported slicing ham on March 9 for use at the deli bar during lunch and dinner that day and lunch the following day. She also prepared and served sandwiches for the same meal. So she had worn gloves while slicing the ham and while serving sandwiches at the deli bar. She denied any illness during the outbreak period but reported that her infant had been sick with watery diarrhea since March 7, two days before she prepared items for indicated meals. Because the food handler wore gloves during food preparation and serving, she did not feel that hand washing was as important. So what happened? So of the 18 fresh tool specimens, so nine had evidence of Norwalk-like virus. Of the four deli foods available, only the ham sample from March 9 was positive for Norwalk virus was also detected in the stool sample from the ill infant of the food handler who prepared the deli sandwich on March 9. The sequence of the amplified product was identical to those products from the ill students and the deli hub. So do you think the evidence implicates the food handler as the source of the outbreak? Is it conclusive? So more likely, 
source of the outbreak is the food handler, primarily the infant. So spring break ended the shift of the campus food service called Texas Department to find out what must be done to reopen the bar. So which of the following actions would you recommend? A, throw away all leftover deli bar food and ingredients. B, clean and disinfect all equipment and surfaces in the deli bar. Require all food handlers to submit a stool specimen before allowing to return to work. Educate food handlers and develop a sick food handler, etc. Okay. So that there's no recurrence, uh, following steps should be followed. So there, there should be policy, supervisors in the cafeteria, monitor your food handlers, there would be union, and staff from local health department should provide their expertise in foodborne diseases. Okay? Uh, I walked you through with this tabletop exercise for you to appreciate more how to handle an outbreak investigation. So it is like a detective game. Who, who did it, who did what, etc., etc. Um, for health precautions. Okay. Um, I hope you under uh, appreciated outbreak more and maybe in the light of the coronavirus you will understand how difficult it is for our epidemiologic experts to live in the coronavirus era where everything is new things are to be discovered and we are just on our first year of our epidemic curve okay so if there are no more questions, you may leave this lecture. You may go back to this lecture on YouTube uh, to run it again through your mind to understand it better. Okay, thank you. See you on Friday.